Elements and compounds that are solids, liquids, and gases can be combined together to form mixtures. One type of mixture is called a solution. A solution is an example of a homogeneous mixture. The particles of a solution are very small, usually less than a nanometer in size, and they're evenly distributed throughout the mixture. If you were to shine a light through a solution, it's not going to scatter light. The beam of light would go straight through the solution. All solutions exist as a single phase. In the picture of the test tubes, you see a liquid phase. You can also have a mixture of gases or a mixture of solids. A solid solution of metals is called an alloy. For example, if you took zinc and copper and mixed them together, you would get brass. Another characteristic of solutions is that they cannot be filtered. The only way to separate a solution is by evaporation, distillation, or chromatography. Distillation takes advantage of the different boiling points of liquids. Let's say you had a mixture containing two different liquids. Each liquid is going to have its own unique boiling point. And so when you boil the mixture, you can separate the liquids based on their boiling point. An example of distillation would be taking salt water and putting it into a flask, as seen on the left-hand side of the diagram. And then when you apply heat, the water will begin to boil and rise up as a gas into the top of the flask. That gas then travels through a condenser where water is being circulated in order to cool that gas down. And then coming out the other end on the right-hand side would be the pure water. Now this picture is a distilling apparatus that's actually taking advantage of the process of evaporation as well because the salt that was in the salt water will remain in the flask and just the pure water is collected as the distillate in the flask on the right. Another way to separate solutions is called chromatography. This method separates solutions by passing them along a stationary surface, usually something like chromatography paper or filter paper. And what you do is you place a liquid solution on that filter paper and then you stick the end of the filter paper down into a solvent, usually alcohol or acetone. And then that liquid is carried up the paper by capillary action and in the process causes all the different pigments in the liquid to separate from each other. All solutions are made up of two parts. The solute, which is the substance that is dissolved, in the picture on the right, that would be the sugar that's in the spoon. And the solvent, which is the substance or medium that does the dissolving. Most of what we'll be discussing in class are aqueous solutions in which water is the solvent, as seen in the beaker on the right. Another example of a mixture is a suspension. A suspension is a heterogeneous mixture in which the particles are unevenly distributed throughout the mixture. And usually the particles in a suspension are very large. And so because the particles are large, they're heavy, and they settle upon standing. So it's very easy to tell the difference between a solution and a suspension, because the solution looks evenly distributed and won't settle out, whereas a suspension looks cloudy, and if you give it enough time, the large particles will settle to the bottom. The test tubes on the right show a suspension of lead iodide, and lead iodide is not soluble in water. And so when you first form the suspension, you'll see a yellow liquid form. But if you allow it to sit for a long enough time, all of those yellow particles will sink to the bottom. The best way to separate a suspension is by filtration. So we could take that test tube and we could pour it into a filter funnel filled with filter paper. And the filter paper will collect the filtered solid or residue, while the clear liquid will continue through the funnel and collect in the flask below. The liquid that we collect in the flask is called the filtrate. The last type of mixture is called a colloid. A colloid is kind of in between a solution and a suspension. It has medium-sized particles. A colloid is similar to a solution in that the particles are evenly distributed, and they're not heavy enough to settle out. Also, like a solution, colloids cannot be separated by filtering. The best way to tell the difference between a solution and a colloid is whether or not they scatter light. The scattering of light is called the Tyndall effect, and it's characteristic of colloids. In the container on the right-hand side with the red liquid in it, when the beam of light is shined through that liquid, the light reflects off of the particles of the colloid and creates a foggy effect. That scattering of light is called the Tyndall effect, whereas the solution on the left doesn't show that same foggy quality as the light beam travels through the solution. 
Solutions will not scatter light, but colloids will. There are many different kinds of colloids. The first type is called a foam. Foams are produced by taking a gas and dispersing it through a liquid, as in whipped cream or shaving cream, or dispersing that air through a solid, like marshmallows or styrofoam. An emulsion is a type of colloid in which a liquid is dispersed throughout another liquid. This occurs in mayonnaise, milk, and butter. Smoke is an example of a colloid in which solid particles are dispersed through a gas, whereas aerosol is a colloid in which a liquid is dispersed throughout a gas. Common items that are aerosols are fog, mist, or hairsprays that come out of an aerosol can. The difference between a gel and a sol colloid is a little trickier. In a sol, like latex paint, a solid particle is dispersed throughout a liquid medium, whereas a gel is the opposite. In a gel, a liquid is dispersed through a solid medium. Examples of gel would be the jello that you eat or styling products that you use in your hair. Some solutions are also known as electrolytes. An electrolyte is any substance which conducts electricity when it's dissolved in a solution. Compounds that make electrolytes include acids, bases, and ionic compounds. When you place these compounds into water, they dissociate or break apart into charged particles where there are positive ions and negative ions floating around in the solution. In the picture to the right, there's a beaker containing an electrolyte with two electrodes going down into the solution. And because there are positive and negative particles floating around in that solution, I'm able to conduct electricity with those electrodes, making the light bulb light up. That is what makes the liquid an electrolyte. However, covalent compounds do not dissociate. They don't break apart into ions, and therefore they are considered non-electrolytes. So if you were to put a covalent compound into a beaker of water, place the electrodes into that solution, the light bulb would not light up because there are no charged particles floating around in which to conduct electricity.